Italian Football Podcast. One thing that I do want to talk about um, is is Allegri, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course, I want to speak about Allegri, um, and um, I want to. I want to. Sh- this this game was a microcosm of of. The, the shortcomings of, of Allegri during his, his second spell at Juventus from an attacking point of view. And Juventus had in the second half an XG of 0.15, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which was, was that more or less than, than the XG against Fiorentina in the second half? I think it was just more. I think he improved I think slightly it was more. 0, yeah. I think it was 0.11 against. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's that's progress from Allegri on the, <laughs> on the, Fior- on the Fiorentina game. Um, but uh, Juventus were just a complete non-entity in, in that second half, and it just it sums up just how bad offensively Juventus have been under Allegri during his second second spell at the club. I mean, it's just it's just not good enough, and this is the. This is why when I start calling Allegri a, a dinosaur, an attacking dinosaur, it's mostly around his inability to, to create chances, to score goals, to have those attacking patterns of play. To, to, you know, and I did a little bit of a, de- a deep dive and I had a look at some of the underlying stats uh, and, and the overlying stats, if that's a word, um, of Allegri. And Allegri's Juventus have 45 goals in 32 games this season. That's the sixth highest number of goals in 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 Serie A. That's the lowest amount uh, Juventus have in 25 years at this stage of the season. So 25 years is another negative record. I, I hope someone's <laughs> tallying up these negative records that Allegri has during the second spell because every, every week there's a new one. Um, so that's 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 obviously unacceptable for, for a team like Juventus. Um, it's even more unacceptable when you look at the attackers that Juventus have. I mean, Vlaovic, Chiesa, Yildiz, Milik, Keane. You know, I'm not saying this is Roberto Baggio, mm. Vialli, Ravanelli Thank in you. the 90s, but it's it's a still a very good level of attackers. I uh, and it, that's, that. I mean, that's unacceptable. Their, Juventus are the fifth highest scorers away from home. Uh, at home, Juventus are the joint eighth highest scorers in Serie A together with Cagliari. <laughs> Right, <laughs> joint eight with with Cagliari. I mean, that's absolutely that's absolutely shocking. Now we go. We'll come to the underlying stats, which are just as abysmal. And the underlying stats generally play out when when it comes to the actual normal numbers. Um, and Juventus are, and this is the key one for me. This is the key one for me. Juventus are sixth in Serie A for xG for expected goals from open play. They have an XG of less than 1, 0.95 XG per game average from open play. Um, and this this really sums Juventus up. They're actually Juventus first in Serie A. This is this season for expected goals from set plays. So this really sums up what Juventus are and what Juventus have been under Allegri. They're a team, a set piece team, crosses and corners. That's it. That's where their chances and their goals come from. Crosses and corners. And Allegri has been paid nine million a year for three seasons to play Brexit football of corners and crosses. It's like like a like a nineteen eighties English Division One team, like like watching Wimbledon from from, from the eighties. The crazy gang, the crazy gang under Mike Bassett, not Mike Bassett. Um, Bassett. What's what's his first name? Not Mike Bassett. Uh, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Bassett. Anyway, his name is Bassett, right? He might as well be Mike Bassett. Um, but this is the this is this is a fantastic one. Juventus are tenth in Serie A this season for shots on target. Tenth, tenth in Serie A, tenth. That's un- unbelievable. They're fifth, fifth in Serie A for big chances. They're eighth in Serie A for corners. Dave Bassett. Dave Bassett. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Dave Bassett. Um, they're they're eighth in Serie A for for corners one. So despite being the, the best in Serie A for, for set plays, they're only eighth for, for winning corners and they're sixth in Serie A for, for touches inside the opposition box. So, I mean, listen, you get the, you get the picture now that Juventus are, it's very difficult for Juventus to create chances and score goals when, you know, you're spending that amount of time in the, in the, the opposition box, when you're, when you're putting so little pressure that you're creating that, 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 that number of corners um, but it's not, you know, this is not just this season, which, you know, 
was supposed to be an improvement, you know, on on the last two seasons in terms of the underlying stuff. But they're the eleventh high. They were the eleventh high. I didn't realize it was that bad. They were eleventh highest scorers in Serie A in the twenty twenty one twenty two season, which was Allegri's first season. Uh, and then they were sixth highest scorers last season in in um, Allegri's second season. And then they're the sixth highest scorers this season uh, again. And they pl- and remember they are playing once a season this season, so that, you know they, they they shouldn't be it shouldn't be this bad really. Um, so. So yeah, that's that's the underlying metrics, and that just uh, really just sums up Juventus under Allegri. That it just hasn't been good enough from an from an offensive point of view. It it really hasn't. It's just it's just not good enough, and that's why at the end of the season, I'm I'm pretty confident now that Allegri will 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 leave at the end of the season. And I think the the proof Nimmer was the. Did you see the the letter from John Elkamp to the yeah. or shareholders? Uh, last week, in which Allegri's name wasn't even mentioned, that that's that's the sign, isn't it, Nimmer? That that this is it for Nim for for Allegri, isn't it? I think it's not just that. I think it's the fact that after Andrea Agnelli and that kind of leadership of Juve left, um, the way that the, the manner in which they left and Juntoli coming in, um, him being there three seasons, um, you know, I I think it's just natural that the I just feel like it was it was inevitable that was going to happen because the vibe around Juve is so toxic. The fan base is not happy with him. You know, they're very divided. It's it's a lot of arguing, um, and and you can't have that. You can't. Juve's not. That's not how Juve works. They they don't they, they don't like this kind of this energy around them. Um, and I think what will happen is that in classic Juve fashion, he'll win the Coppa Italia. He'll finish third. And then they will basically have a conversation and part ways respectfully, you know, without much drama, because that's just how you run things. Um, and, and I think it's the right thing to do, because it's clear that if Juventus sporting directors or sporting project doesn't want to be where Allegri is, then I think they, there's no point in continuing this project. And yeah. that's what I've been saying for months. Anelkan, no said, Anelkan said in his letter that, he basically said, "This is the Juventus of, of Juntoli." He said, "Juventus's future was in Juntoli's hands," which is exactly the right way to do he it. Described right... this season as year zero, which I found yeah, I which saw I found that hilarious. and I loved that because it is year zero. Oh, it it literally is. It's a new sporting it project. Is John Elkad, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you hate you hate you hate to be compared to John Elkad. Yes, anybody. I do. Uh, but um, but yeah, I think it's a clear sign. Allegri Allegri's gone, um, and yeah. I, I, I think Allegri's been a little bit more nervous. We had he's had some rows with the players um, recently, and and yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I think I think this is the end. No, I no, it is. is it's, this, it's definitely. I mean, I've been saying it for a couple of months now that I think that Allegri's going to leave at the end of the season, and I think he'll he'll have been there three years. But this is the first yeah. public sign that we've yeah. had from Juventus because they don't usually you know yeah. reveal much. Juventus will need to get that Champions League place, and then they can start officially planning. Um, for the next season, and that's why getting this draw is, you know, it's not good for Juventus. I mean, I think they'll be, they should be fine for Champions League because it's we're now we've now got a ninety nine point eight percent chance of getting fifth place. They're getting the extra the, the extra spot in the Champions League. Uh, we may even get a sixth spot if Atalanta go on and win the win the Europa yeah, League. Yeah, I which would be amazing. Um, I am so but... pro Atalanta in the Europa League. It's not even <laughs> funny. I think they deserve it, and I. Well, we're going to get to yeah, it. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, but yeah, let's let's move on from um, let, let's move on from uh, from this. 